Hey everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So today we are going to begin the video on a very positive note. Always remember that the price of discipline is lesser, always lesser than the pain of regret. So buckle up yourselves and try to prepare really hard for the examination because you don't know when the notification will come. And as the notification will come, then you will be in a fix because you will not prepare what will happen. And current affairs, especially 80 questions, it is really very difficult to cover all the current affairs in just 15, 20 days or one month before the examination. So don't wait for the notification to land yourself in a soup. Okay? Prepare for the exam. Start preparing. And one more thing. I uh, encounter this question that whether should we prepare from the January month onwards or should we go back to the month beyond uh, before January or months ahead of January. Okay, for example, today itself on the discussion forum, uh, there was a question of a student who was asking me, ma'am, I want to prepare for NABAD examination. So from which one month should I start my preparation for spotlight? Okay, now whenever you have this type of question, then you should definitely go back to the examination of the previous year and usually we expect the RBI to come out around February to March, in the end of this month you can expect the notification, Nabad ka cycle hai that you can expect the notification around June or July. And for SEBI, you can expect the notification around this time. And in case it is not released during this time, uh, you can expect it towards the end of this year. Okay, so you have to prepare accordingly. For example, if you are preparing for January, you should also pick up the spotlight of the previous year. Okay, December, ho gaya, November, ho gaya, October, you have to pick the spotlight of the previous year. Because it will be in 6 But in case you are preparing for Nabad, Pick up from January onwards, okay? And one more thing, guys, ki current affairs ko as a subject mat padho, it's ko as a life padho. Because current affairs become, when current affairs become your life, then only you can uh, think of achieving success in this, okay? Chaliye kaafi zyada motivation ho gaya. So let's begin the video. This is our uh, mobile application which you can uh, download from the google play store and here you can clearly see these are the features and apart from these features you get multiple features on the app so why not explore it yourself okay so one more thing guys um that this is our whatsapp number you can use this number to connect with us to uh send us the feedback through whatsapp this is our main website. If you want to know more about us, you can use that. This is our mail ID. In case you are encountering any problem in your preparations, we are here to help you. Okay, so utilize us in your preparation journey and ask questions. We are free and we will be more than happy to resolve them for all of you. Okay, Chalye, let's begin with the question number one. Okay, so recently the Supreme Court of India hosted the 73rd anniversary of its establishment okay article 124 of the indian constitution establishes the supreme court supreme court of india came into existence on 26 january 1950 that is our republic day okay and is located on the tilak mark new delhi the new year's event was aired sorry this year's event was aired on social media platforms and saw dash chief guest sundaresh menon who is of Indian origin as the chief guest. So here you have to fill in this blank. So Sundareshwar, Sundaresh Menon is at present the chief justice of Singapore. And this is really a proud thing that Indians are spread across the globe. The people of Indian origin, not exactly Indian, but Indian origin ke log har jagah hai. Aapko US mein dekhiye, UK ke prime minister Indian hai, Africa ke, West Indies ke, kaafi saari countries hai, jahan pe Indian origin ke bhoot saare log hai. And they are at very good and reputed positions. So that is a very proud moment for all of us. And there was a report uh, which I'm remembering. So OECD ne release kiya tha, that report, I guess world migration report was that. So that report provided us with the data that India has the largest number of diaspora. The migrants working at a good reputed jobs outside India, okay, across the globe. So India has the highest or, uh, yeah, India has the highest in my opinion as far as I can remember this report because this report was released last year. So I haven't read this since then. So I may be wrong in terms of the facts, but do remember that India has a large diaspora 
outside the country and that is the fact that is completely 100% true now coming to the news so news is very simple supreme court is uh, celebrated its 73rd establishment day and when was it established always remember that on republic day on our first republic day not only our constitution was implemented or enforced but supreme court also got a statutory status or it came into existence okay and 26th january is the date it was founded and 28th january is the date when it started operating okay so establishment date of supreme court would be 28th january but foundation day of the supreme court would be 26th january okay um i know that it's a bit complicated but this is the scenario so you have to deal with it okay when the question asks you about the establishment date and in the options you get two options like 26th january or 28th january so establishment may you will take 28th January. When it is asked, uh, the question asks you about the foundation day, then you will click on the 26th January. Okay. So, uh, Article 124 of the Indian Constitution establishes our Supreme Court. Then, Supreme Court is established in, uh, is located in New Delhi and it came into existence on 26 january 1950 our uh, constitution was also implemented and when we are discussing about the 26 january so here i would like to take a few seconds of your and believe me thoda hi time lagega just revise the facts related to republic day so republic day this year who was the chief guest egyptian president was the chief guest then why do we celebrate the republic day on 26th january the reason is because I don't know how many of you people know this fact, but this is a very interesting fact that on 26 January 1930 in Lahore, we called for the Purna Swaraj. And in order to commemorate that event, we chose this date to implement our constitution, to enforce our constitution. Otherwise, why would we wait for two months when our constitution was ready on 26 November, then why would have waited for two months? Right? So, because we wanted to celebrate this day. Now, 26 November ki baat nikli hai, to remember that 26 November is celebrated as Savidhan Divas, Constitution Day in India. Because on that day in 1949, our constitution was created and adopted by the Constituent Assembly. Thik hai? So, these were some of the facts that you need to uh, remember and know. Because this is not only a class of current affairs, but this is a class of general awareness as well. The next fact here is that 1950 was the year in which Supreme Court was established, but there must be some authority, some judicial authority, which would be giving out the judgments before 1950. So which authority was it? It was the Federal Court of India. Okay. So it is a federal court. So it used to be the apex body only, but after the constitution, we changed the name. We gave it a statutory uh, and the constitutional status because we just saw article 124 gives the status of Supreme Court and uh, makes it the apex judiciary body in India. So what we did, we changed the name of the federal court of India and also added some powers to Supreme Court. And uh, we did, we gave constitutional status by virtue of the constitution in 1950 but prior to 1950 we had the federal court of india which also used to work like the supreme court only it was the apex court in india then the president appoints the chief justice and every other judge of the supreme court on the recommendation of the national judicial appointment commission which is called the collegium okay right now we have the collegium system this national judicial appointment commission is basically uh, right now in a very heated position okay there is a lot of debate going on whether should we have the national judicial appointment commission or not because in this commission there would be people from the government also and the court also and the court is against this commission because the court believes that the legislature should not intervene and uh, interfere in the matters of the court whereas the legislature believe that there is a huge lobby in the judiciary because of which the talented people are not getting a seat in the forefront therefore the government should intervene and there should be a fair appointment of the 
judges in the Supreme Court and the high courts of the nation. Okay, so that's the uh, I would say uh, conversation or the conflict here. But nevertheless, do remember that Chief Justice is appointed on the recommendation of the Collegium as well as the other judges of the High Court also uh, are appointed on the recommendation of the Collegium. There is no fixed tenure period as such. Every judge holds the office until, or, until he or she retires or attains the age of 65 years. Okay. Now, because of this thing and because of the seniority principle, we are going to have the first female CJI in the year 2027 and that too, the tenure of that teacher would be of one month because after that one month, she would attain the age of 65 years. So my question from you is, my dear friends, you have to tell me the name of the first female CJI. Okay. Last but not the least, Justice Harin Lal J.K. Sundas Kanya was the first Chief Justice of India from 1950 to 51. Again, he must have achieved uh, the age of 65, therefore he retired. Okay, it's not that important. Hai. Uh, so let's move on to the question number two. Which ministry has set up a committee on the digital competition law to examine the need for a separate law on the competition in the digital markets. So here, what is the right answer? Ministry of Corporate Affairs. You can clearly see from the options, the options are really, really close. Okay, But do remember, it is the Ministry of Corporate Affairs which has created this committee. Although I'm not saying that the Competition Commission of India comes under this ministry because Competition Commission of India does not come under, under any ministry. Rather, it is a statutory body which has come into effect by a statute. That is Competition Commission Act of 2002. And since we are talking about the competition in the market, therefore, it is important for you to know that Competition Commission is not under any ministry as such. Okay. Now coming to the news. So it's a very simple news. A committee has been set up, but the repercussion of this committee, rather the implication of this committee is very huge. So the significance is that this committee on digital competition law has been created and the secretary of this commission would be the secretary of the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. So he would be the chairperson of this committee and at present, Dr. Manoj Govil is the secretary in the Ministry of Corporate Affairs and he will be chairing this committee. Now, what is the benefit of creating such a committee or what is the purpose? The purpose, guys, here is to have, to ponder basically on the need of having a separate digital competition law. We have seen that the entire market is being shaped through the fourth industrial revolution and this fourth industrial revolution is nothing but the digital revolution which we are seeing in the industries abhi aap logo ne chat gpt ka bhi naam suna hoga this is the new i would say it's a very disruptive technology which is going to have a great repercussion in the labor markets also because if you have used chat gpt you must have seen that chat gpt is able to create stories it is able to produce creative content for the marketing websites. So what would be the content writers do if the companies hire or purchase the chat GPT subscription? So there the labor laws need to be regulated. Therefore, we need to focus on this thing that right now does India need a separate regulation for uh, the digital markets. Okay. And not only this, the digital market in itself is becoming really hyper competitive and because of that hyper competition, there are many, I would say, uh, malpractices that are being done. For example, see, Google ka jo com, uh, verdict hai by the Competition Commission of India, ek hi chota sa example dungi from that order. Theek hai? What Google used to do, whenever we buy a smartphone, what do we see? This is the search bar, right? On our mobile, we all get this feature of search bar. But what do we see here? It is only Google. Do we get the option to change our search operator, search engine operator? No, we do not get that option. So what is it is doing? It is eating up the business of Bing, which is a Microsoft's uh, search engine and Yahoo. 
सो इन सब का बिजनेस गूगल खा रहा है एंड दिस इज दिजिटल माल प्रैक्टिस सो इन ऑर्डर टू कर्व सच माल प्रैक्टिस डू वी नीड सेपरेट लॉज इन इंडिया दैट वुड बी द टास्क ऑफ दिस कमिटी आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द इम्प्लीकेशन ऑफ इट सो दैट इज द रीजन फॉर विच दिस कमिटी ऑन डिजिटल कॉम्पिटिशन लॉ हैज बिन क्रिएटेड एंड इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन सो डू प्रिपेयर इट ओके सो क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री वेर डिड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी ले दी फाउंडेशन स्टोन ऑफ द साउथ इंडिया फर्स्ट इंडस्ट्रियल कॉरिडोर प्रोजेक्ट ओके सो तुमाकुरु इज द राइट आंसर नॉ दिस तुमाकुरु गाइज इज द प्लेस इन बैंगलोर ठीक है सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ओके आई एम सो सॉरी गाइज हियर इज अ मिस्टेक इट इज नॉट अ प्लेस इन बैंगलोर इट इज अ प्लेस इन कर्नाटका नियर बैंगलोर okay it was just a little absence of mind because of that i wrote bangalore it is near bangalore in karnataka not in bangalore as such theek hai so what i was telling you is that in tumakuru only very recently prime minister narendra modi has inaugurated the helicopter manufacturing unit of the hindustan aeronautics limited and do remember it is india's largest helicopter manufacturing unit which has been inaugurated at this place only so this place is very important do remember this thing now what has happened the thing is that at the tumakuru at this place the foundation stone for a project has been laid now what kind of project it is it is going to be a part of the chennai bangalore industrial corridor okay so this chennai bangalore industrial corridor would be the first industrial corridor in the south india okay so these are some of the facts from this news that are important now i'm going to take you into the corridors itself how many corridors are we developing but before that have a look at this hal facility the largest helicopter manufacturing unit in india theek hai so this is not only important for us from the perspective of atmanirbharta in defense but it will also help us in generation of employment because who is going to work here the people the local laborers they are going to get jobs okay so first of all know this fact that in india we are developing three type of corridors first corridor is the defense industrial corridor second corridor is our industrial corridor and third corridor is the freight corridor theek okay? hai and one very surprising fact is that all these corridors are being developed by different ministries ठीक है सो दिस मेक्स इट ऑल दी मोर इंटरेस्टिंग एज वेल एज अ लिटिल बिट कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑल्सो क्योंकि अब आपको याद रखना पड़ेगा कि कौन से मिनिस्ट्री कौन से कॉरिडोर बना रही है और कितने कॉरिडोर बना रही है और कहाँ बना रही है सो इट्स अ लिटिल कॉम्प्लिकेटेड आई नो बट लेट्स ट्राई टू सिंप्लीफाई इट ओके सो फर्स्टली डिफेंस इंडस्ट्रियल कॉरिडोर्स की बात करते हैं सो फ्रॉम द नेम इट सेल्फ इंडस्ट्रीज विच विल डेवलप द डिफेंस रिलेटेड वेपन्स इक्विपमेंट्स विल बी developed across the nodal points of, uh, which will be selected in this corridor okay for example uh, in uttar pradesh only let's take the example this is up although it is not circle but let's take the example it is up so suppose now this is the corridor that the government is uh, expected to create it is envisaged so these are the nodal points theek okay? hai now on these nodal points and along their way what is going to happen the industries will be set up and which industries will be set up the industries which will create the defense related uh, equipments and the goods theek okay? hai so this is the basic idea of a corridor so along that corridor the industries will be set up and these industries specifically cater to the defense equipments and goods theek okay? hai now at present only two corridors are being developed ab isko aap apne liye lucky samjho ya india ke liye unlucky but that is the fact aapke liye lucky isliye because only two corridors are being developed so it makes it easier for you to remember that only uttar pradesh and tamil nadu are going to have such corridors but desh ke liye unfortunate isliye hai kyunki pehli cheez to in pe kaam chal raha hai but utni pace pe nahi chal pa raha so at present we do not have the defense industrial corridors across these uh, states right 
क्योंकि उतने स्पीड में काम नहीं हुआ ऑल दो एम नॉट सेंग कि काम नहीं हो रहा है काम तो हो रहा है डेवलप हो रही है इंडस्ट्रीज अक्रॉस दीज कॉरिडोर्स एंड प्रोबेबली द स्पीड एट विच दिस गवर्नमेंट इज वर्किंग इज अनप्रेसिडेंटेड बट स्टिल we need to have more and more defense related corridors if we want to become atmanirbhar and cut down on the budget of defense imports now in uttar pradesh six nodes will be created okay nodes like as i told you theek hai isko kuch bhi bana lo aap hexagon bana lo isko but ha six places will be create uh, connected agra aligarh chitrakoot jhansi kanpur and lucknow so in these cities the defense industries will be set up and the ecosystem will be created so that employment will be generated and uh, the uh, defense related products are there and we can export it to the other countries also in tamil nadu chennai coimbatore hosur salem and uh, tiruchirappalli these are the places which are going to be connected through the defense industry corridor okay now let's talk about the industrial corridors which is going to take a little bit more time why because there are 11 corridors which are going to be created in india and these are very important for india's own growth if we want to become a super power economic super power by 2037 it is very crucial for us to have these industrial corridors theek hai because if our economic growth is not backed by employment then it is a superficial growth it is not going to stay for a longer period of time theek hai so the 11 corridors are first is delhi to mumbai industrial corridor chennai to bangalore and here only the foundation stone has been laid theek hai amritsar kolkata east coast industrial corridor with visakh chennai industrial corridor as phase one theek hai then we have bangalore mumbai corridor the extension of cbic to kochi uh, via coimbatore hyderabad Nag nagpur uh, will be connected hyderabad warangal will be connected through the industrial corridor so hyderabad bangalore will be connected odisha economic corridor which will cover the state of odisha and provide the uh, employment opportunities in odisha because we know that in the south odisha there is a lot of poverty and it needs to be catered to so if this happens then definitely the region is going to get a boost then delhi nagpur industrial corridor now guys here you can clearly see the map i will discuss about this map and will zoom it out for you but first have a look at the target so target is that 11 industrial corridors will be developed through 32 projects and this will be developed by 2024 to 2025 and from here your question is made theek hai by which year does the government aim to create the industrial corridors 2024 to 2025 how many industrial corridors 11 obviously you are not going to get the questions in such a simple manner how many industrial corridors or by which year questions will be elongated and twisted okay so again i would say try to inculcate a habit of reading by reading editorials by reading news articles theek hai kyunki aapko questions bahut lambe milenge paper mein and time bahut kam hai okay ministry of commerce and industry is developing these corridors and those industrial defense industrial corridors are being de developed by the ministry of defense theek okay? hai now let's talk about this i hope this is visible it's quite visible now so guys what you are seeing here the straight lines are the industrial corridors and these dotted lines are the freight corridors and the total of six freight corridors are at present being discussed by the government five to confirm hai but sixth one is the proposed freight corridor that the government is planning to put in the union cabinet for approval theek okay? hai so these dotted lines are basically the freight corridors which are uh, developed along the lines of the industrial corridors and obviously if we do not get the logistics in time and in a cost effective manner how would the industries run so in order to make the logistics cost less and in order to pro uh, deliver the goods the raw material and the finished goods at the time at the right time these freight corridors are being developed because aapne dekha hoga that in order to uh, give priority to the passenger trains because tracks to hamare paas same hi hai so on those tracks what happens passenger trains are given more priority in comparison to the 
freight trains because of which the logistic cost first of all increases and the goods are also not able to reach on time that is why we uh, deliver the goods through the road medium majority of the goods are uh, done through the road only and the delay in the railways is one of the major reasons for that otherwise road transport is very expensive in comparison to railway transport but why does the company not prefer the rail transport because of this only and in order to reduce this thing from happening these freight corridors are being developed okay one more thing now we are talking about the freight corridors and the logistic cost so india's logistic cost is equivalent to 14% of india's gdp okay and the target of the government is to reduce it to the 10% whereas the global average is 8% okay so do remember these targets these are important now last but not the least let's talk about the freight corridors also uh okay first of all look at this picture this picture has been taken from the wikipedia but i am sure that these uh, points are correct okay so don't have any doubt on the authenticity of the content on this picture every content is tried and tested before presented to you so you can trust us as far as the current affairs are concerned so dedi dedicated freight corridor corporation of india limited which is a public sector undertaking under the ministry of railways is going to develop the corridors okay so these corridors are be being developed by the ministry of railways industrial corridors ministry of commerce and industry and defense corridors by the defense ministry very easy to remember nothing much is there total six corridors are there but do remember the sixth corridor that is southern dedicated freight corridor is proposed only okay it is not announced it is not approved it is proposed whereas the other uh, defense uh, sorry dedicated freight corridors are either in their partly operational state or they were just announced they, the work has not started on any of these announced corridors but still they are approved and soon we will see the work happening on these corridors i hope you must have found this information useful and in case the video is useful for you then guys do hit the like button share it among your friends as well. now coming to the fourth question union ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairying purushottam rupala informed lok sabha that india is the highest milk producer in the world contributing 24% of the global milk production in the year 2021 to 2022 Milk production of India has registered a dash percent growth during FY15 to FY22 and increased to 22 crore tons in the year FY22 from 14.6 crore tons in the year FY15 so this is the time period uh, where the modi government started at the center level and this is the time period which is very recent because we do not have the data of 22 to 23 because 23 has not been completed so we have the latest available data of this year only and this is the uh, period where when the modi government started to take power okay so the next sentence is on the other hand egg production has also increased from 78.48 billion in fy15 to 129.53 billion in fy22 at a growth rate of 8% Okay, so here you can clearly see the question is very elongated. Now, what is the right answer here? So the right answer is fifty-one percent. So you have read in the question itself that this data was presented in the Lok Sabha budget session of the Lok Sabha is going on. Sorry, Parliament is going on, and let's uh, discuss this fact also. I hope all of you are aware of this fact that we have three sessions: budget. this is a very basic general awareness part and in case you did not know about it so from now onwards you are going to know about it so budget monsoon winter budget session is assumed to be the longest session followed by monsoon and winter is assumed to be the shortest session of parliament okay and it is provided that the parliament needs to meet at least twice in a year that is a compulsion given in the constitution okay moving back to the news so what did the minister inform the lok sabha about it the minister said that the total milk production uh, of 
India contributed 24% in the global milk production or global milk market. So we are the largest milk contributors. <coughs> now this data has been cited from the Food and Agriculture Organization's Corporate Statistical Database. So this makes it authentic because it is not influenced by the government. It is the outsider's data. It is a data of an UN agency, of a UN agency, right? So next thing is that the milk production has increased by 51% from 14.6 to 22 crore tons, okay? Do remember the production estimates? These can be asked. The value of 22 crore ton of milk stands at rupees 9.32 lakh crore on the other hand egg production has also increased from this much to 129.53 billion in 2021 to 2022 and the growth rate was eight percent okay now these were the facts let's have a look at the knowledge nuggets also because they help us in broadening our viewpoint so in 2014 the national program for dairy development was launched and the basic idea is to develop the dairy industry. Three existing schemes were merged into that program, intensive dairy development program, strengthening infrastructure for quality and clean milk production and assistance to cooperatives. So these are the three schemes which were merged into the national program for dairy development. Then in July 2021, the scheme was restructured in order to give emphasis on the milk products and their quality. Okay? So not only quantity, but quality was also emphasized. Then the National Livestock Mission, Submission on Feed and Fodder Development. These are separate missions which are helping us in developing our dairy industry. So these are some of the facts, I would say, which you need to know. Last question of the day. So recently the central government announced its plan to launch the IPO of Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency Limited and state-owned engineering consultancy firm Vapcos in FY24. Tuhin Kant Pandey has been given the official responsibility of carrying out the divestment process of CPSEs. Tuhin Kant Pandey is the secretary of which of the following departments? So here the right answer is Department of Investment and Public Asset Management. Deepam K.A. Secretary. Okay, first of all, uh, let me just inform you about the Ministry of Finance only because Deepam is a part of Ministry of Finance. Department of Expenditure, Revenue, Economic Affairs, Public Enterprises and this de uh, Department of Investment and Public Asset Management, all of these are the departments of uh, your Ministry of Finance. Okay? Whereas the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade is a department of the Ministry of Commerce. So that's a very big distinction and often very confusing. So do remember Deepam, Deepam is in finance and DPIIT is in commerce. Now, the next point of importance here is that the government is planning the IPO of IRDA and Webcos. Now pay attention to the word planning because Right now it is in the planning stage, but the divestment in the public sector banks and the insurance company was announced way back in 2022's union budget. But what we are seeing right now, no work is happening as such as far as the divestment is concerned of these banks as well as the insurance company. This one is in, in its planning stage, so God knows when the work will get the pace. Now, IREDA is basically uh, it is an NBFC, non-banking finance company. It gives loans to the companies, to the state governments for creating the renewable energy products, uh, projects. Then we have the Webcos, which is an engineering consultancy firm. So basically it would give the consultancy for developing the engineering projects. And you would be very surprised to know that it comes under the Ministry of Jal Shakti. But that is the scene. Ministry of Jal Shakti is the head of administrative head of this uh, PFC. 
then tukhin kant pande who is the secretary of uh, deepam has been given this responsibility of carrying out the work of divestment for the gov okay so here very important fact about tukhin uh, kant pande is that he is a part of the fm's crack squad okay i have already informed you about the crack squad it is nothing but a group that the finance minister created so he has been given the role of uh, first of all in the coming year he has been given the responsibility for selling the idbi stake majority stakeholder in the idbi is lic and the government okay more than 90% stake are owned by lic and the government in this idbi bank which the government wants to offload then the privatization of the shipping corporation of india container corporation of india bharat earth movers and nagarnar steel plant of nmdc okay so these are the privatization works in the pipeline of the tuhin kumar sorry tuhin kant pande okay now we have talked about the crack squad so why not discuss it at length so this crack squad includes tv somanathan who is the economist and secretary in the ministry of finance then ajay seth who is in the department of economic affairs and he is the secretary of that and um, he has been given the responsibility for hold, hosting the finance track of the g20 theek hai then we have the initiatives like india's first sovereign green bond issuance so the every kind of work related to the green bond issuance is taken care of by ajay seth who is the secretary of the ministry of economic affairs in the ministry of finance now green bonds ki baat nikli hai so just in i want to inform you that 16000 crore is the corpus that the government wants to raise through these green bonds and rbi is issuing the green bonds so rbi is going to issue it in two forms 8000 8000 and in two 10 years 5 years 10 years same but the entire amount will be raised in the current year only fy24 and one more thing that first tranche of this uh, green bond has already been launched in january only theek hai the next point here is sanjay malhotra who is the chairman and md of rural electrification corporation vivek joshi who has been given the responsibility of privatization of banks and the insurance company v anand nageshwaran who is the chief economic advisor and he has to be a part of the crack squad of the government so here guys this video ends and i hope you have enjoyed the video in case you find any loopholes or any feedback is there in your mind feel free to provide it in the comment section or on our whatsapp channel uh, whatsapp number okay one last thing uh, that discussion forum is also there where you can put your queries and here i would like to say goodbye to my dear friends and students also and always remember this fact that the price of discipline is lesser than the pain of regret so pay attention to this thing keep this thing in your mind and whenever you are lazing off dozing off then try to buckle up yourself try to cheer up and work for your goals goodbye guys keep working hard